Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Bloodness. Office Blockade. We are two of us today. If Patreon's your thing, check out the link in the description below. Loads of stuff on there. Starts Do it. At just three dollars a month. Uh, helps support the channel, and there's something pretty much every day. Full watch alongs to many shows, sitcoms, got sports tier on there. There's loads of stuff on there, so check it out if it's for you. Subscribe to the YouTube channel as well, mm. mate. Yeah, Sound absolutely. Your there. Mm. The bunker buster bomb. Yeah, I didn't. Was, when I heard about this, I had no idea how it was possible to work. Right, so. is this the one they used last week on the um, yeah. in Iran? Yeah, the USA uh, took out some of the nuclear facilities in Iran. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's see how it works. How does it I, work? I don't. Know I couldn't, even, I couldn't even have. I couldn't have an idea. I've got an idea that it penetrates the the surface deep down, thousands of feet, and then explodes. Is what I'm thinking. Right. Well, right. yeah, that kind of makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Let's see. How, let's see how it works. Yeah. yeah. We just summed up there. Didn't <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. That's the end of the video. <laughs> Almost all the missiles hit surface targets, but most of the countries keep their secret weapons by making sides inside the ground. And in this condition, assume that if your target is 50 to 60 meters below the ground, then the missiles cannot do anything there, because when the missile hits its target, there is an impact sensor in front of it, which gets activated as soon as it touches the target. After this, this impact sensor activates the detonator attached to the missile and the detonator causes a tremendous explosion in whatever warhead is there in the missile. So then there is a need for such a bomb which first goes deep into the ground and then blasts and this is what is being seen recently in the war between Israel and Iran. Iran has built some nuclear sites underground and Israel wants to destroy those sites. So, to destroy these underground sites, different types of bombs are made, which are called bunker buster bombs. They're working. I'm not sure if it was just Israel that wanted to, to destroy these sites. I think pretty much mo most of the world wanted to start, like, see these sites go. Yeah, you know, with the they're around with the nuclear weapons, weapons and all that. Yeah, with nuclear weapons, yeah. Because only end in one way. Yeah. And the way of launching them is completely different from a missile. These underground sites are called bunkers. So to destroy these bunkers, bunker buster bombs were designed which operate according to different depths. Here you can see multiple types of bunker buster bombs. But the most important here is GBU-57, which is an American bomb, and it can destroy a bunker up to a depth of 60 meters. And if seen, this is the most powerful bunker buster bomb in the world today. Let's try to understand its engineering in a little detail. If seen, especially America has powerful bunker buster bombs and all three of these are from America. Bunkers are specially made of reinforcement concrete under the ground, which is very strong. So these bombs are designed to break this reinforcement concrete, which will become clear to you later. First of all, let's talk about Blue 109. This is a bomb made in 1970. This bomb oh. weighs about 900 kilograms and is capable of destroying a building of one floor up to a depth of two to three meters. After this comes GBU-28 and currently Israel is using this bomb to destroy Iran's bunkers which can go into the ground up to a depth of about 6 meters which can destroy a building of up to 2 floors. Isn't that just like a normal bomb? Its total weight is 2,300 kilograms. Wouldn't a normal that. bomb go about that far down if it, when it lands? Number one, it, well, they, normally, they normally, like she was saying before, they, they, uh, the voice was saying before, that you can normally target a surface um, area. So what you're doing, you, you, a, a structure that's there, you're kind of blowing up the structure that's there that's been built above yeah. the ground. So but it would probably still go yeah, that I think, far I think it into might it. Cause, it might cause devastation below as well, um, yeah. especially if there was like um, if there was some kind of like um, room underneath of some sort. Right. You might drop yeah. in and start do it that way, but I, I don't know. If its size is compared to a human being, then you can see it. Oh. Its total length is 19 feet and its diameter is 13.5 inches and its warhead is kept in its center, which is around 300 kilograms, which contains 80% tat and 20% aluminum powder. Actually, all the bunker buster bombs are dropped from a height. So, their weight itself gives them speed with the help of gravity. Mm. So, when the bomb falls from above, there is a laser sensor on its front side which locks the target with the help of laser. There it's are also adjustable line, fishes here which keep guiding the bomb. But let us try to understand the working of this bunker buster bomb with the help of the world's most powerful bomb whose name is GBU-57, which can go deep inside by breaking a what? concrete structure of about 60 meters in the ground, which is equal to a 24 building and almost up to this depth the bunker can oh, be destroyed. Shit. If we look at the length of the bomb, then its total length is 20.5 feet and its diameter is 31.5 inches. If we compare it with the size of a normal human being, then it is mm. this big Looks like size. a rocket. And the most Just interesting thing is that its total weight is 14,000 kilograms. That is, its total weight is 14 tons. 
And it was made so huge because thrusters are not used inside this bomb like a missile. The missile keeps itself stable with the help of its thruster and hits the target with proper accuracy. But inside this bomb, its weight and its size keep it stable. Now the question comes how is this bomb launched? Because it cannot go anywhere on its own like a missile. To launch this bomb, a powerful aircraft is required, which again America has, whose name is B-2 Sprite Stealth Bomber. Oh, this aircraft America, flies yeah, at a very high altitude <coughs> and flies at high speed due to which it easily escapes the radar. Now this is also a very good engineering in itself, which we will understand in detail in another video. When Just the aircraft scary. reaches its targeted location, it freely drops the bomb from here in the air. Just now we saw above that GBU-57 is a heavy bomb weighing 14 tons, so the B-2 Spirit Bomber can carry only two GBU-57 together. When this bomb is dropped from such a height, now there is a need to hit the bomb near its target with complete accuracy and for this, GPS and inertial navigation system are installed on the back Incredible. of the bomb which guide it. It has batteries to store data and as a network antenna, it also has an adapting ring to establish the connection. But most importantly, thrusters are not used inside this bomb. So, this GPS and IAS feed their data to the motor-controlled fins at the back and these fins can be adjusted in such a way that they perfectly direct the bomb towards its target. What? For now. If you have seen, the same fins are used inside SpaceX's reusable rocket, the working what? of which you can understand in detail from this video. Now this bomb is falling downwards freely in the air and it has a weight of 14 tons, so due to gravity it absorbs tremendous kinetic energy and its speed reaches the speed of Mark 1. When such a heavy thing comes from the sky at such a high speed and hits the ground, then it is a simple matter that if its body is not strong then breaking the bunker is a far-fetched idea. It will blast as soon as it touches the surface. Then the body of GBU-57 is also made of very strong hardened ferro-cobalt alloy. Interestingly, 80% of the weight of this bomb is its body itself. The remaining 20% contains explosives and its equipment. Its warhead is kept inside the center of its body which weighs about 2,270 kg. So the primary work of its body is to keep all the fuse controllers and warheads inside it safe until it reaches its target. First of all, when the nose of the bomb strikes the bunker from the front side, then there is an inertial impact sensor on its front side which senses the impact and generates the first trigger signal and tells that the impact has happened but the explosion is not to be done yet. From here the signal goes to the microcontroller and digital delay fuse which starts the timer as soon as the impact occurs. Along with this, it also analyzes the impact force in depth. But sometimes, after the impact, it only activates the timer. For example, the explosion is to be done after 150 milliseconds after the impact. So as soon as the timer is completed, this signal reaches the detonator unit and it is activated and this unit generates shock pulse with high voltage and current. Due to which the large explosive content kept inside the bomb catches fire. Now we have already discussed that the cover of this bomb is made of a very strong alloy. So the warhead inside it creates tremendous high pressure and temperature and after a limit, this strong metal breaks due to which a big explosion occurs. But when the explosion occurs, this bomb does not catch fire, rather its explosion generates a shock wave, which is basically a pressure wave. So, tremendous pressure is generated inside, due to which cracks start appearing in the structure of the bunker and this shock wave is so strong that it also causes earthquakes. Now you think that if we install thrusters inside this bomb and power is given by the thrusters, then can this bomb go to a greater depth? So the answer is no. Because when thrusters are installed on the bomb, its speed will reach the speed of Mark 3 or Mark 4. So we have to make its body more strong so that when the bomb strikes the ground at the speed of Mark 3 or Mark 4, it can bear such tremendous pressure. Otherwise the bomb will blast as soon as it hits the surface and as we keep increasing its strength, its costing will increase. This is why thrusters are not used in it. If you are interested in learning such animation, then the details are in the description. Do you were right. You were kind of right. Yeah, kind of. But I just what the bit that baffled me there is I don't know. I don't get how it can go to a depth just by gravity taking it down. You because I mean? because of what it's made what out. What it's of. made out of. Yeah. yeah. 
So why don't they make the bunkers out of that same shit? <laughs> they just go, dink. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. But yeah. like, maybe, I don't get it. Do they know how, like, does, does Iran know that they've got them? Yeah, like, well, they like... was used, I think, I think they were used in uh, Afghanistan as well, wasn't they? Because oh, yeah. um, I think I think some of the Taliban were fighting out of caves and stuff like that, and, you know, like in the mountains. Yeah. And I think some of the some of their um, stock and stuff like that, but, you know, their war and yeah, yeah. so like, stored there. So I think they used the bunker busters in Afghanistan oh, yeah. as well. I might be wrong. The on craziest that, thing about that, though, is the fact that it doesn't lock on like a missile. It just, like... The flaps yeah, just navigate it navigate down. It's through GPS. That so, could easily yeah. that could easily miss its target. It could do. Um, the chances are it's probably a very sophisticated yeah, GPS yeah. system that'll get it bang onto its target. But just probably. for me, it just I don't get it. it's it's just not 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 computing with me at the moment. How it can go so far through many layers of concrete or whatever it is, and all its strength and structure, just keep going through layers without any kind of propulsion, just pure gravity dropping it down. Do you know what I mean? Because imagine if you get if you get the thrusters on it, like she said, and it can go through Mac, you know, up to Mach three, Mach four, then that's going to go way further down because that'd be thrusting it down, that'd be pushing it, won't it? Yeah. But it's uh, I'm just I guess from a great height, that speed it's picking up, and that what's it's it's picking up some serious speed, and I guess the shape of it and everything like you said, what, what it's, it's made, made out of, yeah, if it's yeah, made out of stronger material than like it that. Just... But it's interesting to see how they do it because then especially the, the the advancement in it as well, for it's gone from what was it 1.6 meters to six meters, yeah, to sixty, to 60. meters, yeah. It's mad, so I, think, I think they're probably working on these bunker buster bombs now because everyone's burying the, the stuff deep underground. You know, um, some of these bunker buster bombs will probably. Why don't you know, they just go like two hundred meters down? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> what's worth to build? You yeah, know? yeah. Well, that's probably what the people are doing, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. You know, you look at. I watched a video once where the I think it was um, was it in a, in a mountain somewhere? It was like a massive shaft down with where computers were stored. It was in Switzerland. It's, I can't remember, it was uh, it's like mountains where shafts are built in China and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, where st- serious data's kept, sort of thing. It's, you know, people are working down these shafts, but it's like 200 metres in the, inside the mountain and stuff like not, that. It's not that thing. What's that island in Norway called where they have loads of like, locked yes. away thing? Like, what's the, what's the island called? Svalbard or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Svalbard. 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 Something, yeah, yeah. something like that. And they have like a thing with loads of test tubes in it mm. in case life goes extinct. Mm. Oh, really? Something like yeah. that, yeah. Let's see if we can find a video on it. Mm. Interesting, no? Voice, is, was a little, yeah. voice was a little bit questionable. But was, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. right, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, interesting stuff. And uh, hopefully it's never, it doesn't have to be used that often. Um, anyway, enjoyed it. Hope you guys did as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.